13 days. Uh, this is my Jolly Roger. And obviously the game is a clear attempt to take Twilight Struggle and distill it down into, I don't know, a half hour, 45 minute game, right? Um, and it does that very well, actually. It captures one of the core mechanisms which I think people look to and say, hey, this is what made um, Twilight Struggle such a great game. And focuses in on that, which is, you know, the, the card play which forces you to make a decision. Do I want to play this um, for the points or do I want to burn this card on the opponent, you know? Uh, in order to try to get some kind of scoring situation on the board itself. What's different here that's significant to me, really significant, yet I think covers more of a general gameplay thing, is the board state isn't really the same kind of board state that Twilight Struggle has. There are important areas in Twilight Struggle that are always important. What's important here is up to what the players choose um, from their agenda cards. Which means that you could well have board state carrying over that just does not help you at all. And it doesn't provide you with a lot of um, uh, interplay with other, other locations on the board at all. Uh, the one exception to that is there is some residual effect to these that's a little different. And there's the potential <coughs> that cards that you have in play or, or pieces that you already have in play, um, the card for those pieces could come up again. There are some big differences, like the limitation on the number of pieces that you have. There's never any limitation in Twilight Struggle. So you have this additional little problem that you have to try to cope with, which is you only have 17 little cubes that you can put on the board, which means you want to withdraw cubes. The other thing is, whatever you do that's giving you points is also risking losing the game. Um, which is kind of... In a sense, it's not just distilling Twilight Struggle, but it actually does manage to add some additional tensions to that core. And I think that's pretty rich, but <laughs> it doesn't compare for me. Um, which is to say, from my standpoint, what I like in Twilight Struggle, and honestly, Twilight Struggle is about as small a game as I can handle for that kind of situation, um, which you know definitely puts me in a position where I'm you know, looking at this and I start comparing it to other games that I feel that it's competing with more than with Twilight Struggle. I think it's competing with games like Citadel, uh, yeah, 1955, which I think this blows away. Um, 1955 is another attempt to distill that um, CDG type experience into something much, much smaller and tighter. And it just completely does not do. I think this captures more of the flavor of that CDG decision between do you want the event, do you want uh, the ops points. <coughs> um, and it especially captures that neat aspect of if I play this card for, for the ops points, I may be giving my opponent a real advantage yet I have this opportunity to shoot it into space or drop it into the aftermath, which is actually even more impressive because I'm not just burning a card that the enemy has. If I'm putting an enemy's card in here, I'm giving him a potential towards some more points, uh, which there's a lot of, a lot of tight and difficult decision-making as to what you want to do with what. And obviously, if you don't pay enough attention, you could end up just losing the game automatically, as I did in my solo game. It's a hard game to solo because of that um, tightly compacted decision making. But from my standpoint, this is not a game that I particularly would break out very often. For example, 
Uh, I remember hearing in Marco's review, hey, you know, this may not be as deep as Twilight Struggle, and it's not, uh, from what I can see. But this would get played more often. Well, it's actually the opposite for me. Uh, <laughs> generally, games of this nature, I play once and maybe dig up in a few years and play again. Okay, that's all games. All right. But I feel less uh, desire to play something that gives me a less rich experience. And that richness of experience that's lacking here actually has more to do with the representation than anything else. I'm not seeing something... Oh, another game that it reminds me of is Dynasties. Um, uh, an ancient China game where you have a lot of bluffing and secret card playing and everything. I like this mechanism better, I think. But, you know, basically I'm sitting down and playing something where uh, unless I've got some kind of specific constraint where, yeah, you know, I'm at a tiny little, I'm on an ice cream table or something, you know, and I've only got a tiny amount of time, which is never the case. You know, if I have such a tiny amount of time, it's just like, well, let's break out a deck of cards and play a hand of, you know, rummy or something, right? Um... So usually for me, I want something a little bit bigger than this. And then also I want something that gives me a representation where I see something developing on the board. And I don't have that something developing, that spatial representation that really uh, works well for me in Twilight Struggle. I see that I'm getting these spheres of influence in Twilight Struggle and that I can build off them and work off them. I've got nothing like that really here. What I've got here is something where I'm trying to manipulate this little victory point track. And that just doesn't capture my imagination enough. You know, you could say, well, look, dude, you know, the great abstract games like Go don't have that kind of representation. Actually, they show a little bit more to me, but chess doesn't. And I don't like chess anywhere near as much as I do Go for that reason. Um, but this does really, I think, succeed in boiling down the kind of hard choices that you have to make in Twilight Struggle. It's just... I don't play a game for the hard choices, right? I play a game... Um, more from an experiential sort of standpoint. And uh, unless this game became completely addictive the way, say, Dominion has, it, it's just not going to... I'm not going to pull it out very often. And, you know, I, I can respect the work that was done to manage to get something boiled down to this level. It's just... I don't really want a game boiled down to this level. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was interesting to take a look at and to see that you can actually get away with uh, further distilling that CDG uh, game and still keep an interesting game. Um, it's just that it's not, you know, it's not that broad scope that I would desire in a game. And therefore, I don't really feel any any commitment to playing something that's a, a, a simulation of real-world events or whatever. Um, but also the nature of the events. It's also transient. It's over 13 days. There's not a lot I'm picturing here, you know? It, the events, there's so few of them. Uh, I could see a 13-day you know, invasion of Cuba being taking place and that being a, uh, an exciting game for me to watch over, over a two-week period to see that happen. But this just all feels so abstract and so disconnected. Um, other games, not just Twilight Struggle, obviously, but uh, The Making of the President, I get to see that power coalescing in different places. And that's more appealing to me. And so that's a more enjoyable game. Something like Power, uh, Power Grid. I get to see my company growing. You know, it's right there. It's visible for me. I don't have something that's appealing to me in that sort of visual and, and um, you know, very... Uh, this just doesn't hit my emotions in the same way. So all I'm doing is playing a card game and an optimization 
to try to keep my track, you know, stable so I don't lose the game and you know, I didn't do a good job this time. But again, in two players, I had no problem with that. You, it's not like, you know, it's just handling the camera, trying to describe the game as it's going on, it's more likely that I'm going to make more mistakes, which is something that you get used to when you watch my vids. Um, but overall, yeah, you know, if, if you really are looking for that, hey, there's something I really like about Twilight Struggle, about, you know, the tension in the gameplay and everything like that, but I don't have, you know, I have 45 minutes to play, and I want to play it on an ice cream table <laughs> and um, it's just that gameplay tension that I'm interested in then yeah this is what you want if on the other hand you want you know um, a deeper set of choices if you want um, if you want that visual history playing out if it's important to you to see uh, sort of what's going on I don't think this provides that in the same way that I, I, I prefer a game to give me um, and and it just you know it comes down oh, another one Caesar and Cleopatra that's another one this just reminds me of those it's such a pared down uh, system where it's all about the, okay, I've got these couple of places where I could be playing, and you know what they are, uh, and now I'm just trying to psych you out with my, my chip play, which is also inter, um, it has an interplay. It's being affected by the choice of events that I've got in my hand, my position in the uh, DEF CON track and everything. There's definitely a lot of interesting little stuff going on, and it's all packed in this tiny little package. It's just that that doesn't appeal to me. Um, but I can see where this could be a very appealing game to a lot of people, uh, especially the more Euro crowd, if, you, if they like something about Twilight Struggle in terms of that play, the tension of the decisions, etc. Yet, you know, they don't have the capability to watch a game for more than, <laughs> to, to be playing a game for more than 40 minutes, you know. <laughs> then you can get more of these in too. So if you want that decision cycle to be really compact and as tight as possible, this, this will help there too. You know, I mean, Yes, I taint my discussion because, quite honestly, the people who are watching my videos are probably tilting more towards the other side of Twilight Struggle. Hey, it would be better if it was an eight-hour game than uh, towards this uh, pared-down uh, style of game. But, hey, who knows what I have watching, right?